Hi everyone, to our last lecture in our uh, first session, uh, our last topic, topic number three, key control indicators, KCI. As you all know that we already finalized uh, topic number one, which is the KBIs, the key, key performance indicators, which is uh, focuses on the performance and how we can measure the performance within our organization and we give the full identification of the KBIs and how we deal with the KBIs and the different types of the KBIs and also uh, we finished topic number two which is the KRIs which is the key risk indicators and we give a full identification of the KRIs and also we give a hint about the risk management system and how we can deal with the risk and how we can identify the risk and how we can mitigate the risk as well and how we can put appropriate plan to do that and also what's the different types of the KRIs that we can use within our organization. So we reach to the last topic of our uh, first session here, which is the indicator set. And the last, our last topic is topic number three, uh, KCI, as I said. Uh, KCI, key control indicators, is a strategy and a tool in the same time. It's a strategy to assure that our metrics are on place. And it's a tool that we use it to evaluate our metrics and indicators within our organization. Let, let us take it at that. First, it's a strategy to assure that, a strategy that, that we take to assure that we are on the right place and our metrics and indicators that we use are uh, appropriate to our organization. And it's a tool we use it uh, to uh, evaluate our indicators and evaluate our metrics that we use with our organization to assure that we are on the right place and we are using a, a proper metrics or proper indicators within our organization. You're going to find the identification and the whole uh, definition of the uh, KCI within the uh, materials that I'm going to upload it with the uh, video. You're going to find it in the uh, description box. Okay, approach to the key control indicators. Uh, key control indicators. When it comes to when it comes to key uh, control indicators or KCI, you you need to plan, execute, and monitor your control infrastructure in a managed way. What 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 does that mean? Each and every activity that you need to do, you have to have a good. You you need to have a good plan. This plan describes to you and explain to you how you're going to execute this activity. But what is the best way to do that? When you are uh, intend to do so, there is a question pop up to your head and you ask yourself, what's the proper way? What's the best way to do that? Okay, first of all, we need to examine our environment. What is the exa examination of our environment? So, Similar to key risk indicators, as we explained before, it all begins with critical introspection. Where or what are your crown jewels? Where are we now? That you need to protect. What we need to protect. From there, what are the compliance and control boundaries? What is our boundaries? Take the time to consider these two questions carefully and the answers you provide, which will be unique to your organization. So, from all of that, we reach to one definition. We are talking about our company policy or our company objectives. So, when we are using key control indicators, we are assuring that we are compliance to our company policy or we are compliance to our uh, company uh, objectives. Okay. We have a strategy that we use with the key control indicators, and this is strategy called defensive strategy or five by five grid defensive strategy. First of all, you have to identify what you need to protect. Then you, uh, you, what you have to protect, then to detect the right way and the proper way 
to uh, deal with the uh, problem, then how I'm going to respond to this problem and how to recover this problem. This 5x5 five five grid strategy or defensive strategy have been identified by NIST, which is the National Institute of Standards and Technology. So, from all of that, we understand that we have a policy in our company or our organization and on the other hand we have our tools and metrics and indicators that we use it to assure that we are compliant to our company or organization policy all these types of set we use it to assure that that we are on the right uh, track to uh, reach the company or reach the organization targets or to compliance with the uh, company policy or to avoid any type of risks that may uh, our organization face if we didn't do our uh, job well or if we didn't watch or monitor our execution of the different activities within the uh, our organization within our organization okay that this uh, you know the quick definition of the key control indicators and how to approach these key control indicators and what's the best way to reach these con key control indicators there is a similarity between key control indicators and key risk indicators the kci and the kri the kris the kris key risk indicators focuses on the individual risks while the key control indicators focuses on the big pictures or when the wide pictures that to solve all the impacts that we may face within the our within our organization we have two points that we need to put on mind when we are talking about the key control indicators the first one is the how to anticipate the control complexities and how to measure control indicators let's talk about the first one which is the anticipation of the control and anticipate the control complexities how are we going to control the complexities within each and every organization there is a specific system that this organization are following sometimes uh, when you are uh, uh, implementing this system sometimes uh, some problems pop up or some different systems that you need to deal with so you borrow this uh, different system or you using this different system and you apply it within the uh, uh, within your organization this lead to some some types of complexity how you gonna control this uh, uh this type of complexity here so this came through the anticipation that you do it on the first place if you are borrowing another type of uh, system or a different system to your organization how you gonna deal with this uh type of uh this new type of a system within the uh uh within the your within your organization and you already uh anticipate the complexity the level of the complexity and uh uh if you didn't anticipate this type of complexity, you're going to face uh, quite difficult when you are applying this type of uh, a new system to your organization. Uh, next point, how to measure and to control the indicators. How to measure control indicators. When it comes to your controls in order to have the right policy, procedures, and audit process in place, you need to have the higher level comprehensive understanding of your companies security and compliance environment that means you need to understand your company policy company objectives very well you need to know how and uh, how to deal with your company policy how to do your organization policy and what's your organization environment and how you're going to deal with this type of environment this is the particularly through giving the fact that often what you are doing in these cases is seeking to detect the unexpected whether that is the misconfiguration or of security or misconfiguration of 
your system or uh, you know any type of malfunction that happening during the uh, you know execution of your project there any any malfunctions happening there how you going to deal with it how you going to control it and how you going to you know uh, 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 you know uh, uh, control your indicators that to find this type of malfunction within your system that was KCI in short brief way uh, uh, how to deal with the KCI within your organization okay we have the benefits from our KCIs here when we are dealing with our KCIs we have many benefits and we give just an examples to these uh, types of benefits that we 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 uh, we found it during uh, we are applying our KCIs to our organization there first of them better focus better focus that kci's focus on ensuring that internal controls are effective in measurable way we can measure and our we can measure through our indicators and also our indicators controls are effective rather than using broad definitions of control effectiveness they provide a more uh, empirical means of assuring the potential of control failure so the first one is the better focus that we are using effective uh, uh, using effective uh, control uh, uh, we using measurable effective control indicators within our organization let's talk about number two wider impact wider impact because controls can mitigate multiple, risk, uh, multiple risks, effective KCIs have the potential to positively impact multiple risk areas within an organization. KRIs, on the other hand, as we said, tend to just focus on individual risk, which can make them less widely applicable. On the other hand, KCI could wider impact and give us potential to positively impact multiple risk areas and to explore more, more risks to our organization. Number three, early warnings. KCI can often be viewed as leading KRIs in the sense that failure of control is an early warning signal for the failure, uh, uh, for the failure of risks for example a kci that flags the potential failure of it security controls is likely to determine the potential of a security risk sooner than kris that measure security failures directly so the kci give us early warnings rather than kris the kris is give us how to deal with the specific type of risk uh, on the other hand the kci give us early warning for this type of risks Number four, audit friendly. Many organizations will have an audit function as part of their three lines of defense. And we're going to give an uh, example for these three lines of defense there. Governance model. A core part of the actively, uh, activity is an audit of existing control to ensure that they are working effectively to reduce risk. This is the definition of the KCI itself. Obviously, KCI can assist in this activity by providing auditor with clear metrics, which clear metrics with, with which to assess the effectiveness of control. So, from all of this definition, all of these benefits, we can introduce our KCI as, or we can identify our KCI as a tool that we are using to assure that we are on the right place and we are using and an effective uh, measurable type of controls within our organization key indicators mapping the relationship between the different type of uh, indicators set for example here we have the kci the key control indicators and where we can apply it we have kri as well here and we have the kbi kbi is focuses on the performance as we are uh, uh, identified before KRI focuses on the uh, risks and identify the uh, separate risk and how to deal with this separate risk and how to control them. And uh, while the KCI it give us the uh, overall picture on how we can uh, deal with this type of problems and how we can assure that our 
uh, our uh, indicators, our uh, indicators that we use with our organization is effective. Here we can uh, also define each and every indicator set that we have, such like KBI, KRI, and KCI, and where we can found it within our uh, observation. As we see here, KBI focuses on the performance of our organization, and the KRI focuses on the uh, uh, the risks and the risk identification and the uh, threat likelihood and the impact of this risk while the KCI is uh, take the overall pictures and, and the wider pictures here and that you have to have appropriate design and also you are effectively operating your system within the your within the within your organization. How to measure the KCI? How we can measure the KCI here through the key risk indicators here First of all, we measure the impact, then we measure the probability, and out of that, we are measuring the action plan, which is the key control indicators. While we are measuring the impact, we are predicting the threats and opportunities. And also, while we are measuring the prob probability, we are estimating the chance that these uh, this uh, this impacts could uh, affect our organization, and also while we are measuring our action plan, we are controlling the impact and these outcomes through the uh, 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 through the uh, measuring impact and also measuring the probability. So the relationship between uh, KCI and KRI is clearly identified here. Uh, okay, guys, this is our uh, last session and we are completing our uh, uh, first session, which we are talking about the, as I said uh, uh, before, we are talking about the different type of uh, indicator set. We are talking actually about uh, uh, only three types of uh, indicator set, which is the KBIs, the KRIs, and the KCIs. We're gonna uh, have. We're gonna uh, talk about the. Uh, we're gonna take some examples uh, on the next sessions. We're gonna uh, know how to deal with this type of indicator set. And uh, next uh, sessions will be uh, an examples for different types of indicator set. Uh, Thank you guys uh, for your interest in our uh, quality sessions here. We finalizing our first session and uh, we gonna uh, talk about uh, in the in the next session we're gonna talk about the ISO uh, standards and we're gonna start uh, with the uh, ISO 9001-2015 and how we can implement ISO 9000-2015 to our organization and what is the uh, ISO 9000 2015 and uh, how we can assure that we are following the right uh, track within the uh, ISO, the, the, the system itself and what is the different type of standard that we need to apply to our organization. Thank you guys and uh, have a nice day.